The iPad runs DaVinci Resolve now, and I had some questions. Questions like what happens if you fire it up on an iPad mini? Can you edit a project entirely off an external SSD? What happens when you output to an external display? And very importantly, how well does it run? I have personally done my testing to find the answers to all these questions, so let's go over them one by one. Among one of the very first things I cared about was can it work with external storage? Because as much storage as you've got on your iPad, video projects will eat that up quicker than my cat can gobble down his kibbles. Another concern was whether I'd be able to import existing Resolve projects started on another machine onto my iPad. The answer to both these concerns are yes and Yes, you can have your project database and your source media live completely outside of your iPad and work on a project that's being fed in entirely off an external SSD. This way you have the option of having zero storage burden on your iPad's internal storage, and as long as you're using a decent portable drive, it does not impact performance. For the case of the M1 and M2 iPads, they are also fully compatible with project archives made on other machines, so you can even import a project that was created on the desktop version of Resolve, and it will open up just fine on the iPad. You can also export project archives from the iPad to be handed off to another machine. And now comes my second question. How different is this from the desktop version? The biggest difference for now is probably the fact that only the cut and color pages are available on the iPad. But within these two pages, they work pretty much exactly like the desktop version. The interface is still very much geared to its mouse and keyboard operation. Although it's also not impossible to work exclusively with the touchscreen. It's one of those things that sounds impossible, but when you think about it, it makes sense for it to be that way. You can even use the speed editor with Resolve for iPad, though that has to be connected over Bluetooth and not USB. There are also some minor UI differences on the iPad version, like having to get used to operating Resolve without the top menu bar, and because there's no delivery tab on the iPad version, we've got this nice little export button up top. On my 12.9 inch iPad Pro, the scaling of the UI is almost exactly the experience I would get on a 13 inch laptop like the MacBook Air. I did try my luck to see if I could squeeze out even more room to work with by setting display zoom on my iPad to more space, but alas, the UI scaling within Resolve stayed the same. I suppose for the iPadOS version of Resolve, the UI follows predetermined layout dimensions which are device specific. There's a detail in my next question which gives this assumption more traction, but it did also make me wonder. Resolve for iPad is also available on the iPad mini. Do I really get to see a full-fledged color tab on an 8.3 inch iPad mini? Well, lo and behold, it's happening. Bit claustrophobic, but it's happening. If you bring up all your panels, everything is so densely packed and you've got a preview that's rather small, but to see a functioning version of Resolve on such a small device, utterly surreal. But this does come to show that Resolve on iPad OS is optimized for the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Anything smaller than this, I honestly think you would start having a rough time with the UI, because there's so much going on, you need that extra screen real estate. Which brings us to question number three. What happens if you output this to a bigger display? I plugged my iPad Pro into my studio display and fired up Resolve on the big screen using Stage Manager. First observation is how I can't quite scale it to a true full screen view. That and the scaling of the UI appears to remain optimized for the iPad's native display. For comparison, here's how Resolve Desktop scales on the exact same 27-inch studio display when it's being run from a Mac. But this doesn't mean that there is absolutely no benefit to connecting an external display when using Resolve on iPad, because you do have the option to output just your picture to the second display as a clean feed. You can right-click or hold down on your program monitor and select a display for this exact purpose. Cool thing is, you also get this option when your iPad is actively mirroring to an AirPlay display like an Apple TV. Do remember though that this option will only show up if an external display is detected. It is also one of the features available only in the paid studio version, and there comes question number four. 
is the paid studio license shared with the desktop version? The answer is no. You will need a separate license for the iPad version. And at $99, it's also priced lower than the desktop version. But unfortunately, if you require Resolve Studio on both your Mac and your iPad, then you will have to pay for two licenses. The prompt to purchase the studio version is quite out of the way though. The upgrade prompt never quite pops up until you attempt to make use of a studio exclusive feature. It's almost like they're not even gonna try and sell it to you unless you absolutely need it. If you, however, want to proactively purchase it, you can open up your project manager window and there would be a buy studio button right there in the corner. And now it's time for the final most important question. How does it run? Well, on the M2 iPad Pro, it's at that level of performance where it's enough power to get work done on it professionally. The playback is smooth and the interface is responsive, which is really all you need to get an editing or grading session going. I do occasionally run into some bugs and crashes here and there, but consider this is an early version of a highly complex software ported over from desktop. This is also quite a bit more resource demanding than the average iPad application. So it's really a release meant for the more powerful iPads with the M series chips. If you go ahead and launch Resolve on an iPad that's not running M1 or M2, you will get a little heads up saying there are some limitations, such as your project resolution being limited to 1080p. It's also important to keep in mind that the iPad is a passively cooled device, so if you put it through a long and intense editing session, it does tend to warm up. But as far as work comes along, it can handle simple grades without dropping frames, and for more complex grades with quite a few more nodes, you would still get a respectable frame rate. It's very comparable performance to Resolve on an M2 MacBook, and they are astonishingly, yet rightfully, in the same league. In fact, in my tests, my iPad Pro actually outperformed my MacBook Air. Stay tuned for my full review of the M2 iPad Pro for detailed performance comparisons against the M2 MacBook Air, as well as the previous gen M1 iPad Pro. But as you're holding Resolve in your hands and breezing through qualifiers and trackers, it's still the most surreal thing to be reminded that you're doing this on an iPad. This release is certainly a loud statement for the future of iPad. Like for years, we have been wondering how are we supposed to possibly harness all that processing power on an iPad? Well, this, I hope, is the first of many chapters to come.